Alright, so I had one of these moments. It doesn't happen too often to anybody, but I'm about to upload a video later today, and I realize that I had to do something before I uploaded that video that I promised everybody, but completely forgot. <laughs> so, we are bringing you here today. If you haven't checked the, uh, the title yet of the video, of course. We're going over the draft for the GPC. We are already in week four, but of course this team was passed on to us by our good friend Robin Vart, who has now unfortunately exited the league for this season, as he cannot continue due to uh, prior engagements, let's leave it that way. Between school and work, it's way too hard for him. So we're taking over as the Montreal Habsols, our regular team name, and we are taking his team and trying to bring it into the playoffs and potentially win this season of the GPC. Now, Rob left us with a tremendous team. I would say this is probably the most comfortable team that I have ever had the pleasure of using in league format. Let's start it off here with Tweety the Zapdos. Now, the for you guys that have been with me for a while, because I know I've just gained a lot of new subscribers, if you're watching this, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, hopefully we get to the 500 subs for the giveaway. But if you are from the beginning of the NBA with me, that means Jar, Rob, Jose, Dom, Colton, everybody, you know that this is a Pokemon that I wanted in the NBA. I didn't draft it first round. It got scooped up by Rob. <laughs> and he also got it here in the GPC. So we finally get to use Zapdos in league format. Why is Zapdos so good? It is one of the most annoying defensive Pokemon to deal with in the OU tier. It is so, so good because of its typing and because of its coverage. Let's just go over what it gets. First of all, the wide array of items that you can run on Zapdos really, really makes it a powerful Pokemon. Its speed plus its special attack enable it to be a very offensive threat. You can run Choice Specs or Choice Scarf as well as Life Orb. Fact that Zapdos gets access to Roost means that it nullifies the damage that it gets from Life Orb by simply roosting it off. So it's really, really cool. And all, obviously it can run Leftovers, a couple of other interesting items like Rocky Helmet. It's normally run in a, in a defensive role, but it can be run so many different ways. It's really, really powerful. Let's jump into its moveset. So we can have, of course, Thunderbolt and Volt Switch. Uh, we can also have Heat Wave on here. Uh, followed by perhaps Hidden Power Ice to be able to hit ground types or Hidden Power Grass depending on what the ground type is of course if you need a quad effective move. Uh, basically this coverage right here, Electric, Fire, and Ice hits pretty much almost every Pokemon for at least neutral damage. There are very very few Pokemon that can switch into all of these moves. So it's really powerful. Uh, then of course it gets access to excellent setup in Agility. Uh, also has access to a nice coverage such as Ancient Power, uh, Extra Sensory from 1st Gen or 2nd Gen, I believe. Uh, get, get Screens, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's keep moving on here. Get Protect, that's alright. Uh, signal Beam is also really, really, really nice. Uh, perhaps you're going against a Hoopa regular form and you need a quad effective move to hit it. Uh, no, Hoopa's not weak, quad weak to bug. Forget I said anything. <laughs> let's just move on. Uh, Thunder Wave, Toxic, very nice status. Always nice to get access to both. Tailwind makes it a great support mon for uh, our next Pokemon, as you will see. Uh, U-Turn also allows you to be able to gain initiative on ground types that you normally wouldn't be able to. Uh, Air Cutter is, of course, its most powerful flying type move. Unfortunately, it doesn't get to use its secondary stab too often. Um, but the rest of his mo its moveset is pretty self-explanatory. Omniswind doesn't really get much play. Uh, we can go on and on and on. Uh, Steel Wing could be nice, I guess, I guess to hit Deancey. Uh, but other than that, uh, Zapdos is pretty much a straightforward Pokemon. But as I said before, it's three coverage options in Electric, Fire, and Ice, or any other hidden power, give it insane coverage. It's really, really good in that sense. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any kind of uh, other stat-boosting moves such as agility uh, for its offensive stats in special attack special defense call mind is not an option or anything like that but zapdos is just really really strong overall uh, and it's it's great bulk just 90 hp plus 85 and 90 defense and special defense respectively and the fact that this thing hits 328 with a positive nature in speed makes it really really powerful uh, i keep saying powerful but that's just what it is it's, it's just such a good pokemon 
and 328 speed. Of course, having anything on 100 or above in speed tiers is really, really good for any team. And uh, as I said before, Tailwind support is always nice. Could be very useful for our next Pokemon here. We have 4chan, the Mega Gardevoir. Now, Mega Gardevoir, obviously, looking at its physical bulk is not too strong. But look at that special attack stat, guys. 165. Paired with 135 defense, uh, special defense, excuse me, and 100 speed once again, just like Zapdos. The ability Pixelate, which increases the power of moves such as Hyper Voice. Unfortunately, <laughs> Mega Gardevoir doesn't get access to Quick Attack, because that would be pretty, pretty cool priority. Uh, but its physical attack doesn't really support that anyway. Mega Gardevoir is also a very cool Pokemon, because before it Mega Evolves, it has the ability Trace. Trace can come in handy when you're facing Pokemon such as Sandrush Excadrill because normally you'd be able to outspeed them if you're max speed, as you can see right here. We'll just make this into a Timid Nature, and uh, this obviously outspeeds uh, Excadrill, even in the sand, because you trace its Sandrush ability, you're able to outspeed it. Uh, fairy coverage plus Psychic coverage in either Psyshock or Psychic, and of course Focus Blast, as well as potentially Hidden Power Fire to hit Steel types as well such as Ferrothorn and uh, Scizor, and access to moves such as Will-O-Wisp, really cool, be able to burn offensive threats that would normally threaten Mega Gardevoir on the switch. Calmine, great setup right here. You can also agility pass for from Zapdos into Mega Gardevoir, not run any speed, purely invest in physical bulk, and then start Calmining up and make this thing a huge, huge monstrous threat. Uh, as I said before, it's alternate uh, like its coverage its status coverage is really cool such as destiny bond we already covered will-o-wisp it also gets access to heal bell and wish uh mirror coat uh no not mirror coat but magic coat bounce back hazards potentially not that anything would really want to try to set up hazards they'd rather just hit the mega carnivore in front of them paint split is cool uh we already covered the psychic uh stab over here reflect also so it gets both screens Shadow Sneak, which I didn't even know that Gardevoir get, got, but that's really cool. It does actually get uh, priority in Shadow Sneak. Uh, Shadow Ball, uh, Substitute, which I've run before on Mega Gardevoir, which is really cool. Taunt is nice. Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, and Toxic. Every form of status uh, that you can imagine, except for Confusion, of course. I probably get Swagger, uh, but you can't run that, obviously. <laughs> Uh, Trick is uh, is usually cool, but not on a Mega Gardevoir, unfortunately. Thunderbolt, nice coverage once again. Uh, Thunder Punch you won't be using, of course. Uh, and everything else is pretty much either a Fairy or a Psychic move from that point on. There's nothing else that I can really look at and be like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, Hypnosis, Icy Wind, I guess. Uh, Magical Leaf could be cool for quad effective on like Rhyperior, Rhydon, things like that. Um, you can't run Natural Gift. Uh, but the rest is, uh, honestly, it doesn't need much more. It's kind of it's kind of like Zapdos. It doesn't need more than Fairy and Psychic for the most part. As long as you have stuff to support it on your team. Something that can take on Steel types and the Pokemon that would normally resist um, Gardevoir's stabs. And if you have something with powerful Fire Stab, then Gardevoir can really, really torment a team. Uh, I'm looking at the move Torment down here. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got that from. Uh, by the way, it also gets access to Trick Room, which is kind of cool for slower teams, which ours kind of is, as you will see as we go along. But like I said, if you have powerful Fire Stab, it just makes it so much better. So here we have Gym Leader Geo, GLG, our Entei. Uh, obviously, we've used Entei before in the past in uh, the UPA. We know how powerful this thing is. It gets access to really cool uh, physical moves, of course, such as Stone Edge, Bulldoze, uh, the obvious ones such as uh, Flare Blitz and Sacred Fire, E-Speed, Banded Entei is normally the set you want to run, but uh, Rob has an affinity for running Charcoal actually, which is really cool because it bluffs Band on your fire moves, uh, like low roll, uh, like high rolls on Charcoal could potentially equal low rolls on um, on Banded, so it's really, really cool. Gets access to Flame Charge to increase its speed, which could be nice. I once ran a Calm Mind uh, Entei. It didn't work out in the end, but it could have uh, if my opponent was running Scald over Waterfall, but we won't get get to, uh, too far into that. Overheat is also very nice. Uh, its uh, special attack is not bad at all at 90. Its physical attack is clearly superior at 115, but you can make use of its uh, special attack, especially with uh, moves like Solar Beam, uh, which is down here. Uh, you can put a Power Orb on here and go Solar Beam if you want to hit something like a Rotom Wash or anything that would normally resist Entei's uh, Fire Stab, as it is only Mono Fire. 
Uh, Iron Tail, really cool, able to hit quad weeks to steal, uh, as well as fairies for super effective damage, any kind of fairy. Uh, and uh, Will-O-Wisp once again, so we have a second Will-O-Wisper here. And just, uh, just the banded set is really, really strong overall. Uh, Roar is nice. Uh, we have another screen setter here with Reflect. We will never be using that, I can guarantee you. Uh, but just, just like, I'll, I'll put it out for you guys. Sacred Fire, which has a 50% chance to burn, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Flare Blitz, the Stone Edge, and Bulldoze Coverage. Uh, and, of course, Extreme Speed, if we just replace this. This thing can pretty much hit anything with a Choice Band. Uh, most things that you would want to hit. Basically, a lot of things that Gardevoir can't handle. So, it's a very, very good supportive Pokemon for Gardevoir. So that's very nice. Glad Rob left us with this. I'm going to have fun with this thing this season. Next up, we have Klefki. Now, I wanted to save this for the end because this wasn't originally on Rob's squad, but Johnny and I talked him into making a transaction uh, after week three, which was dropping Amoongus and picking up Klefki and another Pokemon, which we will, we will get to at the end, you will see. But Klefki, let me just tell you guys, for lack of a better word, Klefki is a sick Pokemon. It's absolutely ridiculous the number of different things that this thing can do its stats don't look good at all all right 80 special attack is nothing to write home about uh, 57 hp is definitely not something you want to be working with but with its 91 defense and its 87 uh, de uh, special defense and the fact that because of the move magnet rise the fact that Klefki gets this move meaning that it is only weak to fire makes this thing really really hard to kill like you need powerful wall breakers to kill this thing because not only can it magnet rise on ground types but it can also thunder wave your faster pokemon if they're not ground types or immune to electric such as mega manectric before mega evolution like the, the fact that it can thunder wave you and then just nullify you and then hit you with a foul play if you're an offensive if you're a physical attacker such as scissor uh, like Jar did this to me in the um, in the NBA week seven, he thunderwaved my plus two Scizor. I got fully parrot on that turn because that is Pokemon, and he knocked me out with a foul play on the following turn. So that can happen. You can run Calm Mind, Dazzling Gleam, but what really makes Klefki cool is that it's a Spike Setter, uh, which Rob has nice Stealth Rockers. You, you'll see in a second. Uh, he has very nice stealth rockers, and he has a uh, great spiker right here in Klefki. Well, we do. Let's let's just move this over to the Montreal Habsaws have a great spike stacker and a great uh, and great stealth rock setters, but unfortunately we do not have a spin blocker, which is a little bit annoying, and I might need to fix that up come week six. We'll see. I'll uh, I'll think about it, but. Klefki is just really good overall because of the spikes. Uh, it gets access to really cool moves that a lot of Pokemon don't, such as Switcheroo, um, as well as Heal Block, which is a, a fun move to use against uh, walls, is you can break them down really easily with the use of Toxic plus Heal Block. They can't even recover off the damage. Uh, Dazzling Gleam plus Flash Cannon to use its special attack against quad weaks, such as Hydreigon on... and Hydreigon on? <laughs> Hydreigon and... Deancey, let's say like these these moves hit incredibly hard Deancey can't even touch you like with a Klefki Deancey cannot touch you if you're using magnet rise It can only hit you with HP fire and if you invest in its special at the special defense HP fire is doing virtually nothing Like honestly this this stat hits a very nice amount 300 plus 317 Normally you're not investing in, it, in its special attack or its attack stats because either you're using foul play or or the coverage that you have, like Dazzling Gleam or Flash Cannon, are, are either quad effective or they're powerful enough to uh, to break offensive threats. Especially with the use of Thunder Wave, like I said before. Play Rough if you want to use its physical attack, because it's not bad either. It hits 91, uh, sorry, no, 80, excuse me. Uh, that's still usable with Play Rough, for sure. And then uh, moves like Magic Code. Gets access to Psychic if you really want to abuse Calm Mind Klefki. Uh, that's not something I, I foresee myself doing, but I guess if the team matchup calls for it, I could. Also gets uh, Iron Defense, which is not... You can run Iron Defense plus uh, Calm Mind and then just like... Uh, this this thing is so cool, man. I love it. I really like Klefki. Honestly, guys, this this Mon is going to... Mirror Shot. Mirror Shot is, is, is so good. 30% chance to lower the target's accuracy by one. 
It's 85 accuracy and it's 65 base power, but it's it's steel type stab. And if you lower accuracy, like Klefki just becomes so dangerous. <laughs> like uh, Metal Sound is also a cool move to use in conjunction with Mega Gardevoir, which we saw before, or even Zapdos. Lower the special defense, switch into Gardevoir or into Zapdos. If you're threatened by a ground type move or a fire type move, if it's special, you can switch into Gardevoir and then fire back a Hyper Voice and just knock knock out the Pokemon that's in front of you. It's it's a really good it's it's, it's a really cool Pokemon. It also gets Sunny Day and Rain Dance uh, if you want to set up for uh, for different Pokemon. Like if I want to set up for my Entei with um, with Sunny Day, I pack a, a Heat Rock, and I know how good that Entei is that week. I could do that. So there's just so many things you can do. Unfortunately, we can't run Swagger, but uh, <laughs> that's I think that's that's fair enough. You know. Moving on. Next we have our Rapid Spinner, J Cream's 14 Blastoise. So. This thing is probably one of the most reliable spinners in the format just because it gets access to a uh, dark type move uh, such as Dark Pulse. Uh, and Dark Pulse allows it to hit ghosts, most ghosts, for super effective damage. Uh, there are certain ones that uh, take neutral damage from it, but there are very, very few. So, uh, access to Aqua Jet, so great pri priority. You can run it. The great thing about Blastoise is that its offensive stats are about equal and its defensive stats are about equal. So you can run this thing defensive or offensive if you want to. I've seen PokeMMD run Scarfed Blastoise on the ladder. It was the RU ladder, but that can work. Like You, you can run uh, Surf plus Ice Beam plus Dark Pulse plus Aura Sphere and that's that's already like crazy coverage. I, with, a, with a Choice Scarf, you can run this thing Modest. And don't be fooled, it still hits 295 special attack, which if every move is, is super effective on something, that could be useful. Torrent, great ability, as, of course, with um, with being able to boost its uh, its water type moves at 30% or below, I believe, uh, if it's at 33% uh, or less, actually. Uh, and of course, Blastoise just getting the ac access to Rapid Spin. Uh, also, just great moves overall, Dragon Pulse, uh, fake out, which is funny. Focus Blast, that's another move you can use in conjunction with Scarf. Uh, gets access to ice type coverage, as I said before. A lot of things that are quad weak to ice, uh, mostly dragons, but you have Roar here, uh, Rest, which is nice, uh, Toxic. Just so many nice things that you can do with Blastoise as a defensive and an offensive Pokemon, mostly in a defensive role, but it can be very annoying for a team to take down uh, if they don't have super effective coverage for it. Of course, it doesn't have any reliable recovery, unfortunately, but, I mean, that's just the price you have to pay with certain Pokemon. It is a very, very good Rapid Spinner, and it's something that is necessary on some teams. Blastoise, however, uh, really only Rapid Spins for Entei, so this is another Pokemon that I might consider switching out at some point, potentially for a Ghost but we will see. The GPC works in a point system where um, you have 100 points to work with and every single Pokemon has a different point value uh, and you have to make a team between eight members and 12 members uh, inclusively with that point total. So if I can find something with a decent point amount uh, for the same cost as Blastoise, I might swap it out, but we will see. Our next Pokemon here uh, is Pokemon I was talking about before, our first Stealth Rocker of the team. Shades, the Crocodile, very, very good Pokemon because it has access to two great abilities in Intimidate and Moxie. These two abilities make it extremely hard to predict what kind of Crocodile uh, I'm going to bring week by week for an opponent. I can bring a Choice Banded set. I can bring a Choice Scarf set. With access to Thunder Wave from Klefki, Choice Banded becomes very, very powerful. Life Orb is also a possibility. Focus Sash to guarantee rocks. Lumberry if I'm trying to set up with Bulk Up. There's just so many things you can do with Crocodile. And of course, once again, the access to great, great coverage and stabs. Crunch, Knock Off, of course, being one of its best moves. Uh, Aqua Tail, which you wouldn't expect from a ground type. A Dragon Tail to, to phase if I want to do that. Dragon Claw, I think it also gets access to Outrage. It does, yep. Uh, low Kick. Uh, to be able to hit heavier Pokemon such as Mega Aggron if Earthquake's not doing as much. Uh, well, Earthquake should do more because it's Stab, but uh, on Pokemon such as Ferrothorn, you can run Low Kick, you can even run Fire Fang. I believe this thing gets Fire. Uh, yeah, Fire Fang, there we go. Grass Knot is cool to be able to hit uh, Pokemon that think they can switch in. Uh, like Rhyperion, Rhydon, we mentioned them before, but you get access to Taunt to prevent hazards or prevent status. Uh, Sludge Bomb, I guess. That's nice for hitting fairies, but I think this thing get Doesn't this thing get steel coverage? 
pretty sure. Iron Tail, yeah, there we go, once again. Very inaccurate move, but gotta roll with it. Uh, and Poison, it only gets Sludge Bomb, so. But, uh, again, great Pokemon overall. Like, it, it just has a very nice coverage, superpowers, uh, assist superpowers, as we said before. It's just great coverage overall, Stone Edge. Uh, stealth Rocks is the biggest thing, though. Uh, it's our Stealth Rock Setter. It's a very reliable Stealth Rock Setter, as it only has a couple of weaknesses, uh, being a Dark and Ground type. And uh, it's got great bulk overall. 95 HP is amazing. Uh, couple that with the Intimidate ability and a great defense stat of 80, meaning that it can pretty much switch into super effective hits from physical attackers and not take too much damage because lowering their attack and having a max defensive set uh, can make this thing really, really difficult to... Uh, wall break because of that and of course we mentioned moxie before just pop on a scar for a choice band and make this thing a, a sweeping power a cleaner at the end of a game is just it's it's awesome i, I love crocodile i haven't used it much in in uh, league format but i know that this thing can be very very good like who was it crimson seabad that ran beat up <laughs> beat up crocodile to bypass a focus sash on an alakazam in the gba on shady penguin like that that was really cool like this thing has certain tools that it's uh at its disposal such as power punch like there's so many things that really make it difficult makes it difficult to predict what it's going to do it's also a pursuit trapper which is great for lotties uh or anything uh of the psychic variety that you want to trap uh like reuniclus anything like that so this is uh this is a great Pokemon, man. I just love it. Moving on to the uh, final three members of the team. Yes, Rob only drafted nine members, but they are of a higher point value than usual, so that's what happens. Here we have Mean Xiao. So, Mean Xiao, it's pretty low on the list, but this is probably our strongest physical threat on the team. By far. It's stronger than Entei. Why? Because Mean Xiao is a Pokemon that gets access to three amazing abilities. Inner Focus, preventing it from being flinched. If I want to run a Scarf set against a Lopunny and catch it off guard and have it go for Fake Out and on the next turn, I uh, and on the same turn, excuse me, I hit it with a Fighting Move like Drain Punch and knock it out. Like, that's crazy. Like, the fact that it gets Inner Focus, but then, but then, wait, there's more. Regenerator. Regenerator means that I can run a Life Orb set with moves like Knock Off and U-Turn, meaning that every turn that this thing is threatening something out, I can get off a Knock Off, and if they go into an appropriate switch, I can U-Turn out. I've taken 20%, but it's all back, thanks to Regenerator. It's a really cool Regenerator mod, and it's not one of the more looked at Regenerator Pokemon because it doesn't have amazing bulk as you guys see right here. 65 HP, 60 defense, and 60 speed F, that's nothing, but this attacks that. 125. It might seem underwhelming because of the power creep now, but in uh, in 5th gen, this thing was so hard to switch into. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so strong. And 105 speed means that we break the 100 speed tier, which is also very nice. Uh, and this thing, once again, its coverage is, is great. Uh, high Jump Kick, of course, or Drain Punch. Uh, you also have moves like Stone Edge. Uh, what else? We have Acrobatics, as you guys can see right there. That's a cool move. Uh, what else? Do we have Fake Out? So you can run Fake Out, light, Life Orb, Fake Out, U-Turn. Take 20%, get it all back. And you've just dish, dished out extra damage for free. Poison Jab hits Fairies. Uh, it gets Swords Dance, which a lot of people don't know about Mean Xiao because it's not typically a Pokemon that you see setting up due to its, its very uh, low amount of bulk. But if you're forcing switches, Swords Dance can be extremely volatile. Uh, also gets access to Taunt, Fast Taunter, always nice to have on the team, something above 100 uh, uh, base speed. Dual Chop is nice for breaking Sashes, as I said before with Beat Up, that's always cool. Uh, maybe break a uh, Garchomp Sash, who knows, uh, or a, uh, a Latios or a Latios. Not that those things normally run uh, Focus Sash, but uh, but just overall a very, very strong hitter. That's that's what it's here for. It's really here for hitting as hard as it can and then leaving. I didn't even talk about its last ability, Reckless. Like this with High Jump Kick, if you guys don't know what Reckless does, uh, Embor gets it too. This Pokemon's attacks with Recoil or Crash Damage have 1.2 times power, not struggle of course, but with recoil or crash damage, 
High Jump Kick has, has Crash Damage, so it gets a boost from Re Reckless. If you're running Choice Band or Life Orb, this move is so strong. It's just ridiculously strong. I think it's almost as strong thanks to that boost and the Life Orb as Mega Medicham's High Jump Kick. And that's crazy, because Meta Mega Medicham hits like, what, 700 attack because of pure power? So that's pretty insane. Anyway, moving on, we have, uh, I haven't nicknamed these three Pokemon because I couldn't think of nicknames. So if you guys have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, I, only one of them is coming to the match this, uh, well, later today actually, but uh, I won't tell you guys which one. Anyway, our next Pokemon here is Uxie. Uh, I want to name this thing CTC, but I already did that in the NBA, so we won't do that. So, Uxie is our second Stealth Rocker. Uh, Uxie, Uxie is even more reliable than Crocodile, though, because it has only two weaknesses, being Dark and Ghost. It's also It also has an immunity thanks to its excellent ability in Levitate. It can switch into ground moves. That's an excellent check to Pokemon such as uh, Lando, I, um, Hippowdon. Uh, even Excadrill, because Excadrill can't hit it too hard outside of, with, without its ground stab. So, uh, well, Excadrill can be run Mold Breaker, of course, but I'm talking about Sandrush Drill. Um, but yeah, so you can run this thing as bulky as you want. Like, you can invest it anywhere. It's really nice. You can split it up if you want to take a certain hit on the physical side one week. Uh, and you can't take it, uh, you can just invest the rest into special defense. Uh, normally, you'd go minus attack here. Uh, what's great about Uxie, though, is that it also hits 95 speed. Which means it's very easy to creep, uh, to creep, to speed creep over walls. So let's let's say something hits uh, 229. We're already we're already faster just by investing this much. This is Golurk speed, by the way. Uh, I believe um, I could be wrong. Uh, Explod hits 265. We can hit that without even going with a positive nature and always outspeed it. Now you can see his move pool. Unfortunately, because of its low attack stats, it can't hit too hard. Like, even if it's a quad effective move, often it won't even knock out the Pokemon, such as Fire Punch. Like, that won't take out a Scizor if it has a little bit of bulk. It won't. It just won't do it. So, that's a little bit underwhelming, uh, that part of Uxie. But what Uxie does get is uh, Setup and Calm Mind, which can be very, very important uh, in certain games. We already have a couple of Calm Minders. This is like our third one but it's really, really strong with uh, Energy Ball, Dazzling Gleam, Extra Sensory. Its special move pool is actually really good. Giga Drain and Grass Knot. Uh, of course, the Hidden Powers, Psychic and Psy Shock. Shadow Ball and Signal Beam. Thunder, Thunderbolt gets access to two statuses once again, Thunder Wave and Toxic. This is just another Pokemon that can help Mega Gardevoir sweep just by statusing Pokemon. Really nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't get access to Taunt, but it does get Trick. You can run a Choice, a choice Scarf Uxie. With Trick, it works. It, it works sometimes. Like it, it depends on what the matchup is. That's the great thing about League Format, guys. It's that you can literally bring just about anything as long as it works for that specific matchup. It's not restrictive to smoke on tiers. So, sorry about that, guys. I was uh, choking and dying <laughs> to pause the uh, recording, but I know there was a little bit of a silence there. Uh, but yeah, so pretty much Uxie just most important thing is that it can get up rocks and that it has excellent coverage so it can hit pretty much anything another foul play pokemon another heal bell pokemon now there's a very reoccurring theme with uh this team that we have here and that is that the reliable recovery is lacking immensely i like pokemon that can get recover and roost and at the moment our only real pokemon that can do that is uh zapdos like gardevoir gets wish but that's not too reliable especially with its poor physical bulk and Zapdos is really the only thing that, that can recover on our entire team. So everything else is forced into resting. So this team is very easily worn down, but we can work with it. I think we can definitely do, we can do good things with it. It's, it's, it doesn't have a lot of holes. That's the important part. It's got great typings across the board. It's got great physical attackers, special attackers, uh, good physical walls and, and special walls. Unfortunately, they can't recover, but they can take hits and that's what they're there for. So. Our last Pokemon, this was part of a two Pokemon transaction, like I said before, Klefki, and this Pokemon were obtained through trading Amoongus, because Amoongus had a very high point value, but because Klefki was so good with Rob's team, Johnny and I convinced him to swap it out for, uh, well, to swap out his Amoongus for Klefki and this Pokemon, Semisage. 
you may not know this Pokemon because it doesn't get a lot of play pretty much anywhere, but I'm confident that it can work. Uh, let me explain why. Because the GBA champion had it on his team. <laughs> That's why I know this thing can work, no. But I've been looking through Simisage's uh, like move pool and what it can do. It's got two cool abilities. Gluttony makes it be able to, um, to eat up a berry at half health. That means that as soon as you get to... Uh, to half health, you can pop a Salic or a uh, Custap Berry. Uh, pretty much anything that would normally only activate like under 50%, like a 25 or 1% or 30 or whatever, anything like that. So uh, it can activate Salic really early. Unfortunately, Simisage does not get access to Belly Drum because that would make this thing a huge threat. But what it does have is great, great coverage once again, just like the rest of the team. It's access to acrobatics, bullet seed, kind of cool, crunch, energy ball, and if you see here, it's special attack and it's attack are exactly equal. 98 everywhere. So you can make this thing a physical attacker or a special attacker. And it also has this nice 101 speed. That means that it hits 333, I believe. 331, excuse me, uh, which is faster than any base 100, of course, as you guys already know. Uh, but this speed means that with Salic Berry, you're basically giving yourself a Choice Scarf. You don't have to go necessarily this route. You can maybe go, what, this route? 285? Give it a Salic Berry, pour the rest into Physical Attack, and then you can run, well, let's give it 31 IVs. You can see it hits 324, which is not bad at all. And then you can run physical moves such as Acro, Brick Break. What does it get as, uh, as physical grass moves, you ask? Well, let's go see. Uh, it does get Seed Bomb. It gets Super Power. It gets Gunk Shot to be able to hit Fairies Knock Off, which is one of the best moves in the game, of course. And it gets access to Nasty Plot. Now, this move, whew, this is one of the best setup moves, in my opinion, uh, because it's... Well, it's the only one that increases your special attack by two stages. Not everything gets Tail Glow. Tail Glow is a great setup move, but only Manaphy and Volbeat get it, I believe. So you could argue that Volbeat, uh, that, uh, not Volbeat is better, but uh, Tail Glow is better than Nasty Plot, of course. But not that many Pokemon get Tail Glow. So Nasty Plot, just anything that has access to Nasty Plot, it becomes a real threat. Like that 101 speed that I mentioned before, against slower teams, this thing can do really well because Grass isn't a terrible typing. Grass is actually, like, it has a couple of key resistances. So, like, water, for example, it's it's a great water switching. Like, what do you usually switch into a Scald? Nothing, <laughs> except for grass type or uh, something that can eat up a water hit. So, uh, like a water type itself, anything like that. But grass is really good. Uh, again, a fast taunter. This is, this, I stress, having fast taunt on your team is so good. Uh, Rock Slide, uh, again, to work with the physical attack. I'm questioning, does he have any physical setup other than power-up punch? I don't think he gets swords dance or a work-up. He does get work-up. Okay, so this this is actually really cool, guys. This raises your attack and your special attack by one stage. What does this mean? That means that you can take advantage of both these 98 stats and make Simis Sage actually really powerful. Like, fo let's say you want to run Focus Blast, Acrobatics, Gung Shot, and uh, Seed Bomb one week. Or Leaf Storm. You can run work up and you're boosting all of your moves across the entire board. So that's that's really cool. Uh, what else? What else do you get? At this point, I'm just like, okay, Iron Tail. Awesome. Uh, another move to hit fairies or quad weeks um, to steal, of course. Thief, not really that useful. Another Sunny Day Pokemon. Might have to make use of this. Like a Sunny Day team with a, a Sun team with like Solar Beam, Simisage. Uh, you have um, Entei over here uh, that... that Makes use of the uh, the sun, of course. Uh, Mega Gardevoir doesn't really appreciate it, but uh, Heat Wave from Zapdos. Like, there's a couple of things you can do with this team. Like, I, re I really like it personally. Uh, again, if you guys have nicknames for these three, let me know in the comments section down below. But that's pretty much going to wrap up the draft review video. Uh, I just needed to get this out for you guys before the battle itself came out because it wouldn't make much sense for me to upload a video where you only see six members of the team and you have no idea what the other three are. So, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up, guys. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel. And, uh, again, leave me nicknames. Come on, I, I, I need to name these guys, and I have no idea what to do. Actually, never mind. I only need two.
There we go. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, guys. Catch you later. Ciao.